Welcome to Monster Party Studio. Today I will be showing you how to paint a latex mask inspired by John Carpenter's 1988 sci-fi thriller, They Live. This is the mask. John Carpenter's design concept behind the aliens was realized by makeup effects artist Frank Carasosa. And the aliens were uh, made to resemble the last stages of human decomposition. So their skin is falling off, their skull is exposed, that sort of thing. We're going to be painting this with an airbrush. We're going to be using mainly a Pache H. In fact, we might just be using a Pache H. Uh, the Pache H is very easy to use. It's a, a single action uh, airbrush. And uh, we're going to be using mainly inks. We're going to do a base of uh, prosthetic adhesive. We're going to use Prosade for that. And then we're going to layer some inks on top of that. We're probably going to be using FW inks as well as Tim Gore's Bloodline inks. Um, and then after that, we're just going to seal it all together with some crystal clear to be ready to be worn. Uh, we'll attach a little strap and it'll be all set. So that's what we'll do. Here are some of the things that we're going to be using in this video. I'm using an Iwata air compressor. It's a smart jet. And uh, there's the Pache H. This is the mask and I've got it on a Lazy Susan turntable. My Bloodline inks. This is the Blood Red. This is Code Blue. And this is a Bruise Purple. And I'm going to use this elastic. And I've got a, a coffee mixer. A chip brush. This is a one inch chip brush. A uh, small paint brush. Prosade. The FW inks. Here's some MSP. It's a hobbyist paint that you can get at any hobby store. I'm going to be doing that for the eyes at the very end. I'll just paint that on. Um, and then I've got some 70% um, isopropyl alcohol. We're going to be using that to thin down the inks. Some chips and salsa and wine. So that's basically all you need to complete this mask. So the first step is to base the mask with something that will help your ink bind to your paint job. Prosthetic adhesive is great for that. So with my one inch chip brush, I'll apply it to the entire mask. So it goes on white, but it will dry clear. Just want a thin coat enough for it to dry tacky and um, take the ink really well. and make sure that I get the areas that I can't see, like under the chin. Okay, so we'll wait for that to dry up. And then we'll come back. So the prosy is dry. Um, actually, there's a couple spots that need a little bit. So the prosy is mostly dry. A good rule of thumb to start with the lightest color first. The lightest color on this particular mask is going to be the chin and the teeth because they are bone color. If you can see that, that's white. And I'm going to mix it in another Dixie cup. Something to keep in mind about inks is that the lighter the color, the chalkier and more densely pigmented the, the paint is. Um, and with all inks, you have to shake them a lot because they settle. I'm going to use a tiny bit of this brown FW ink. Okay, so that's mixing in with the white. And now I'm going to use the 70% isopropyl alcohol. That should be enough. I'm just going to mix it in the cup. Now sometimes I use this to, to mix it really, really well. Now I'm going to get my airbrush ready. I'm going to start painting the chin and the teeth. And I'm just going to gradually go back and forth. Try to hit it from all 
triangles. I'm gonna let the air compressor rest while I mix up a different color. I'm gonna go back to using this brown that I, that I used inside of the white to make it bone color. I'm just gonna put a couple more drops in there. So that's a pretty good color. I like that. I'm happy with it. I'm going to try it out. Okay, I'm gonna go underneath this lip area here. again so I'm turning off the air compressor to do so okay so I'm gonna move on to the blue I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in with an FW ink <clears throat> this blue is really really light and pretty all of these little areas here and around the eyes and around all of these uh, open sores I guess you could call them is gonna be blue um, I'm going to dispense some into a Dixie cup that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. That's good. And now I'm going to thin it with the 70% isopropyl alcohol. Pretty good time. I don't know if you can see that. Alright, so um, right now I've got my PSI dialed all the way up to uh, 55 because I was cleaning the airbrush. <laughs> but I'm going to dial it back down to about 25. Just that, that, that amount's pretty good. pretty good about this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Code Blue. This is a Tim Gore Bloodline color. So I'm gonna give it a good shake. So here's some of that blue. And again, dilute it with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Got myself some more chips and some more salsa, and I am ready to go. And see how well it sprays. All right, let's try it on this side. That's pretty good. All right, here we go.
cool so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and airbrush red into the jaw muscles and all of these little empty areas around the head. And then also there is a, a couple of areas inside of the eye that need to be red as well. So we're gonna paint this up right now. This is Tim Gore's Bloodline Blood Red. Um, I definitely prefer this over the FW Red because the FW is looks like a magenta. So I've got a little bit in there. All right, so I'm gonna clean out my airbrush. Take it all the way to 55 PSI and pour some of that same alcohol inside of the paint cup. Shoot it out into this napkin. I'm gonna add the red to the paint cup. A good tip is to keep your all of the Dixie cups of paint that you have mixed far away from your work area because you are bound to knock something over with your air hose or while you're turning your piece around to take a look at it, you will knock something over and you'll spill paint all over the place. All right, I've got this dialed down at 25 again. All right, so I'm gonna go start airbrushing the sides of the, of the jaw here. And I'm going to go in light layers first. I'm going to try to get a finer line going. There we go. camera because my battery was dying. Just to show you what I did, I deepened some of these blues here like in the bridge of the nose and around the cheekbones and I went around all of the, the wounds and I deepened those and I did the same with the eye sockets around here just to bring them out um, and then I did some around the muscle area too. I'm going to paint black around the nose and the eyes. I'm going to use the FW ink. Shake it up really well.
going to paint the eyeballs with this silver paint. I'm going to paint the gums with blood red using a fine tip paintbrush. The, the ink that I'm using right now is not diluted with alcohol. take this outside and uh, do a couple of passes with crystal clear really really light it doesn't really need a whole lot okay I'm gonna do this outside because it smells so bad okay so I'm gonna leave this out here to dry and then we'll tie the strap the next step is to cut your elastic piece I typically cut about 14 inches. It's a, it's a pretty good standard size. And after I cut it, I burn the edges, the lighter, just so it doesn't unravel. I tied the elastic around the back so you can wear it. And it looks like this. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you like this video. I try to put up videos every week or so. I'll have a list of all the products I use below, including a link to my Etsy store where you can buy this mask unpainted if you want to do this yourself, or a painted version of this mask, and it'll look just like this, painted by me. So, uh, yeah, I hope that you like this. Thanks for watching. Bye.